Hey guys, it's your trainer here, Chrissy Chella, and today I'm gonna to be taking you through an entire leg workout. Now this leg workout is gonna be completely focused on both areas for quads, glutes, and hamstrings. I'm just gonna combine everything together. So if you're someone who needs a workout and an explanation to why I'm doing these specific exercises and this specific workout, this is gonna be the video for you. If you find this video useful, leave a little like so I know to produce more content like this for you. I just wanna help you, that's why I'm here. That is what this channel is here to provide you with help as much as possible. And remember, I'm a trainer, I'm a qualified trainer and I'm here to guide you every step of the way. So without further ado, let's go. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna warm up. So what I recommend is doing the following. Number one, if you have access to a treadmill or a cross trainer, just do about four to five minutes just to get that blood flowing. Or if you're walking to the gym, that's even more better. But on top of that, I want you to do some dynamic warm-ups and mobility. Yes, activation is also key when it comes to glutes, but I would rather you focus on dynamic warm-ups and mobility. So here's a little quick routine that I've put together that I absolutely love doing. The first thing you're gonna do is a body weight squat. By the way, I'm actually going to be training. So this is gonna be my full on workout today. So there's gonna be no messing around here. So we're gonna be, we're gonna be doing a body weight squat, your feet shoulder width apart, chest upright, core nice and tight. No band needed, just your body weight. You're gonna come down, shoot back up. You're gonna give me 20 reps of these, really activating your quads and also activating your glutes by pushing up. You don't need to over hyper extend, just keep it nice and neutral. 20 reps of these as your first exercise to your dynamic warm-up. The next thing we're gonna go into is a lateral squat. So you're gonna come down like this and then you're gonna come over the other side, picking yourself back up and distributing the weight evenly on your feet and then coming over to the other side. You can also rotate like this, extending your foot and stretching that hamstring, coming either side. It depends what your mobility is. If you can't get this low, then go from side to side. If you can, you're gonna squat down and stretch that hamstring out like so. But like I said, everybody's mobility is different and that's something I'm gonna speak about in this video because I don't want you to be paranoid that you're not going deep enough when you're doing something. Your mobility, your ankle, your hip mobility is gonna be completely different to someone else. Especially if you have ultra long limbs, it's gonna be different. But we'll go into it when we perform some squats. From there, you're gonna go into a nice deep forward lunge, opposite hand and opposite toe, meeting in the middle, extending and rotating your back upwards, just like so, holding for around about five to eight seconds, really nice and deep stretch, meeting both feet in the middle, and then repeating that routine on the other side, just like so. Good job, you're gonna do that three times on each leg. Coming back up, we're gonna do some nice deep knee hugs, just like so. Flexing your foot, just like so. Bringing the knee close to your chest as possible and then swapping. Flexing that foot, hugging nice and tight and then swapping. I would recommend to try and walk as you do these. So essentially you're gonna walk, walk, but if you don't have enough space, just keep it where you are, especially if gyms are busy, especially if you just don't wanna be walking around the gym, just do it on the spot. Find what works for you. Ooh, if you lose your balance, hold on to something as well. Find what works for you. From there, you're gonna give me a nice, deep hip rotation, just like so, working that hip 
ball and socket joint, giving me, the, giving me those big wide abductive moves, getting those hips nice and loose. You can also do a nice foam roll here to help really stretch your limbs out and to help with that mobility. But if you don't have a foam roll, just do this for me. So I want you to give me like 20 reps on each leg before switching over. Good job, hold on to something. Don't be shy to hold on to something. Find your feet. You don't have to do everything without any stability. Switching that out a bit more. Then we're gonna go into some reverse lunges. So this is where you're gonna reverse back and then you're gonna shoot back up for me. Stick it to one leg at a time, just 12 reps. By the way, have you noticed how this entire warm up and dynamic routine is being done at one spot? I'm not moving around the gym, I'm just keeping myself to myself in one spot because I find that a lot of clients when I train them don't really like moving around the gym too much. It can feel a bit intimidating. So if you're stuck in one spot, it feels a little bit more comfortable and a bit more like home in the strangest way possible. What you can do at this point as well to make it even more dynamic is shoot your arms up, bring them down. Shoot your arms up, bring them down. Good job. There we go. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna repeat that routine one more time, that is correct. Two rounds of that mobility routine and you're good to go. And then we're gonna get into our first working set and also first exercise, which is the barbell squat. Okay, so the first exercise that we are going to be performing is a barbell squat. Now, one thing that I like to do when it comes to my leg workouts, any workouts, is I like to have my staple foundational compound moves at the beginning of my workout. Now, my personal goals right now are really not to gain more muscle, not to lose weight. I don't, I don't have a, spe a specific goal. I reached that point in my life now where it's just about consistency and longevity. What I do wanna focus on a little bit more as I grow a little bit older is more on strength. And actually what's even more important to me right now is more mobility and stretching after my routines, which I used to neglect for such a long time. I used to do bro science all the time. I used to come in, lift as much weight as I possibly could. I used to throw the weights around. I'm gonna be honest with you. Never used to stretch at the end of a workout. Went home and I thought that was it. Now I prioritize a dynamic warm up. I prioritize active rest days. I prioritize mobility and stretching after my workouts. It is an absolute must. The older you get, it's so, so important. Look, I'm 27 years old this year. I'm, I'm no longer like 17 years old. I'm, I'd say I'm less flexible now, so I need to prioritize those things. And also, my goals have shifted completely. I used to want a big ass, like that used to be my optimum goal. And especially being on Instagram and having a platform, I used to be obsessed with having a big ass because I thought that's what was gonna make me popular. I couldn't give a shit right now about a big ass. My, my language don't care. I care about actually training you about longevity and teaching you how important it is to be consistent with your training and not to just chase those physical aspirations, but actually chase, you know, perfecting your form as much as you can, messing up, but then doing it right next time and focusing on you and what makes you happy. So please don't be bogged down with just getting one thing and one thing only. And if you don't get that thing, you're gonna be disheartened. Listen, don't be fooled, right? People are got genetics on their side. Some people have other things on their side. So, you know, there's only so much you can grow. You can't just continue to progressively overload over time. Progressive overload is not linear. It will never be linear, right? You can progress, but it will never be linear. There's only an optimal amount of weight you can lift and muscle you can gain unless you enhance that shit. So I'm just gonna be honest with you. I don't want you to be disheartened. And that was just a little disclaimer. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a barbell squat. My favorite compound move, something that I'm learning to perfect every single day and that I love doing. 
So we're going to start off with just 20 reps with just the barbell. You're going to place the barbell is actually quite low. I'm going to raise it here. It's quite low for me there. It's actually quite high here as well, but it's fine. You're going to place it by your traps. You don't want to place it by your neck here. You can have a low bar or high bar. High bar tends to be more quad orientated. Low bar is a little bit more glute orientated. But either way, just do a squat. Don't have it by your neck here. You're going to retract and also squeeze your traps, keeping your hands nice and controlled and tight. Placing also the barbell right here on your hand, right? So what I have really weak wrists. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it here and squeeze my hand so my wrist is nice and tight. My wrists are so weak, so I tend to strap them up. But the first couple working sets, I'm just going to use the barbell, no strap. Just here, here, sitting upright, squeezing, bringing the bar, unloading in the middle, keeping my core nice and tight. I have a little bit of a wider stance, that's what's comfortable for me. And then I'm going to go down, come back up. Let me just come out so you can see more. I'm going to go down, up. You don't want to come too low, just like this. You're going to round that spine. It's going to be uncomfortable. So you want to find a happy medium. So you can, go at, you can go at a 90 degree angle or you can go a little bit lower. Find what's comfortable for you. One thing I will say is these are not the best shoes to train in. Now, I don't mind getting my feet out, but that could really upset some people in the gym. So if you can get yourself lifting shoes, flat platform shoes like Vans or Converse, that would be ideal just because the weight distributes evenly. With these, as you can see, they're more like for running. The heel is way more thicker, so that means the heel could slant up a bit. I know I'm going to get my toes out right now, but I just want to teach you. So as you can see here, your foot is completely flat. Sometimes shoes elevate that. So if you're lifting, you're going to put too much focus on your toes, less focus on your heel. You want to have it completely slanted. I know I got my feet out for YouTube. Um, sorry if that was a little bit gross, but I just want to teach you the right way. Okay, so I'm going to put some weight on this. Nothing too crazy. We're going to start off with 10 kg on each side, equating to two, four, 40 kg, which is a 40% 40, 40 max rep for me. So this is still a warm up set. I'm just getting my body familiarized with the weight. Coming up, standing back out, core nice and tight, chest upright. I'm going into my first working set. On the bar right now, I have the bar which is 20 kg, and then I have additional weight accumulated to 70 kg. Give or take, I think that's roughly 137 pounds, 140 pounds, I might be wrong, but give or take, that's what it is, I think. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm working at a rep range of 12, 12 rep range. So if I get to 10, I'm gonna push for two more and get myself to 12. My max weight that I can lift is 100 kg, but I still need to try and improve my depth a little bit more. However, one thing I want to point out and something that I think is so important, there's a lot of misconception about two things in the fitness industry. Number one, that your knee should never go over your toe. That's complete bullshit. Your knee needs to be in alignment with your toe. That means, when you're squatting, if your knees are coming over your toes, guess what, that's absolutely fine. 
What isn't fine is if you're squatting and your knees come in, that's not good. You're putting so much stress into your ankle and also your knee is not in alignment with your toe. Everybody's mobility is different. So if your knee comes slightly over your toe, don't sweat about that. What I want you to focus on is your knees not caving in. That's the biggest problem that you can face. Now, secondly, a lot of people think that the only way you classify a rep in the squatting world is if your ass is so far down to the grass. And guess what? That's not correct either. The reason being is everybody's mobility and range of motion will completely be different in comparison to somebody else. And also your body composition is different to the other person. What Susie, Susanna and Sally body composition is, has nothing to do with you. You are different. So please, please don't be fooled that you need to have complete ass to grass because what can tend to happen is that spine is gonna rotate too much, causing a lot of strain in that lower back. And also, if you have a heavy load, that load is gonna come down with you because gravity is gonna pull you down. So this is what you need to focus on. If you can get to a parallel 90 degree, that's perfect. Sometimes when the load is too much, you can be a little bit higher, which is what I tend to do, and I'm gonna work more and more on my depth. But there's other things that I need you to consider more than depth. Number one is your core engaged. So here's the difference. Breathing in, core is nice and engaged. Number two, when you're squatting down, are your knees pushed out? Because if your knees are coming in, the weight needs to reduce. Number three is your spine upright and straight. If you are coming down like this when you are squatting, automatically the weight is too heavy. So bear in mind, spine nice and straight, in alignment, knees pushed out at all times, core nice and engaged and drive up with your chest. Is also your weight distributed evenly in your toes. If your toes are coming up, um, sorry, if your heels are coming up or your toes are coming up, that's not good. The weight is not distributed evenly. So those are things I want you to consider first before worrying how much your ass is getting down to the grass. Those are things you need to prioritize. Those are things you need to focus on so much more than getting as low as you possibly can because your mobility is going to be different to everybody else's. Because I don't want you getting upset seeing someone on Instagram squatting really, really low and you can't get that low. There's a lot of things you can do like mobility work, foam rolling work, that's really gonna stretch those limbs out and help you over time. But please focus on the things that I mentioned. Knees pushed out, weight evenly distributed, chest upright, core tight, coming nice and high. Because if you're going low and all you're doing is this, no, it's not worth it. So I just wanted to give you a bit of reassurance and I hope that helped you as well. So now my first working set is gonna be rep range of 12, 70 kg, let's get it. So the next exercise we're going to be doing is a stiff leg deadlift. Now when it comes to deadlifts, they're obviously double joint movements, especially depending on what you're doing as well. If you're doing a sumo deadlift, then you've obviously got your hip joint and then your knee joint, it's a double joint movement. However, when you're doing like a stiff leg, sometimes, sometimes, depending, don't quote me on it, it's a hip joint, but your knees are actually quite stationary. So that's something for you to bear in mind. Conven conventional, it's a double joint, so you're bending your knees and your hips as well to lift the weight up. But with a stiff leg, you're isolating your hamstrings and glutes, and it's also a major hip joint, just like so. All right, so what we're gonna do, you wanna walk over to the bar, and then your hands are gonna be placed outside of your legs, just like so. Yet again, same principle, the bar should be sitting by your thumb, 
just like so, gripping it. And then also rotate your hand outwards. So you should see my hand is there. I'm just rotating it outwards just to lock it in. So you're gonna hold it in like this, but then you just wanna rotate it outwards. Did you see that? Good. What you wanna do is your chest should be over your toes. You wanna hinge at your hips, bringing the weight up, squeezing your glutes, never over hyperextending, bringing the weight back down. One thing I want you to bear in mind is that you wanna hinge back as much as possible. So you wanna be hinging, hinging, hinging back, bringing the weight up, never over hyperextending like this. Hinge back and then scoop in. Similar like a uh, hip thrust, you wanna almost bring that coccyx bone tucked into your glutes, squeezing and keeping that core tight at all times. Let's go, we're gonna do 12 reps at this, three sets. Okay, one thing I want you to remember, and also something that really used to dishearten me is, when it comes to stiff legs, Romanians, I never used to be able to lift a lot of weight. I still can't in comparison to a sumo deadlift or let's say conventional. And it used to always really annoy me. I want you to focus more on the stretch during this exercise rather than the weight that you are lifting. You can attempt to lift way more weight but then you're not gonna get that optimal stretch that you want. So the most I can do, and I have been able to do for a very long time, is 15 kg on each side. But when it comes to sumo deadlifts, I can easily lift 70 kg. My one max rep is 90. So that's why I just wanted you to not be disheartened if you can't lift as much as you wanted to when it comes to stiff legs in comparison to a sumo deadlift. It's a different type of deadlift. Don't let that dishearten you. I just wanted to let you know. of the day grab a tiny little weight I can I can take this off but just showing you because this just changed my life and then you roll it over and then it's so much easier to take off the weight just like so and then you're not hurting your lower back and it's just more convenient boom and then the other side what you're gonna do is you're gonna bend your knees lift like a row Scoop it over, boom, unloaded the rack. So we're moving on next to a unilateral movement, which is a single leg movement. I've decided to go for split squats just because, you know, they are the literal devil of all exercises, but they are just absolutely incredible. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be lifting just one dumbbell, one hand, just like so, and holding on to something to support me. You can do it with both hands as well. Depends on what you find comfortable. But in all honesty, I've learned that over time, you know, you just have to focus on your range of motion and going down as low as you possibly can and that your mobility allows you, but also coming back up in a more slower way. Holding on to something is not cheating. It's making you aware of that. Find what is comfortable for you and what is right for your balance. So right here I have a 20 kg dumbbell, just using my straps here, just like so. Rolling my straps on, these are just from Amazon. Ripping the weight, boom. Working on my right leg first, holding on with my left hand side, split squat with my left leg, bringing the weight down before coming back up slowly. <sighs> Never locking that knee out oh my gosh this is so difficult Woo! Ugh.
absolutely not. Ooh, the way my blood is pumping through my legs. But listen, it's these exercises that you hate the most that are just gonna be so much, you know, better for you. So just get it done. And listen, I've been doing split squats for like five years and I still hate them. I still find them by far the most difficult exercise, but you've got to push through them. But uh, yeah, one more set and I'm going to literally just be thinking I'm in Hawaii and somewhere sunny with a cocktail because the way I don't even want to be here right now. Woo! Okay, moving on to a super set now. We're actually going to be doing only two sets of this because the volume is so high. So we're going to do a cable stiff leg deadlift, completely stiff leg. But one thing I want you to remember when you're doing this exercise is that when you're grabbing the weight, you want to step out. When you're going in, you want to sit back as much as you can. But when you're coming up, that's when I want you to really slow it down and squeeze. So we're going to be doing 15 reps of those. From there, you're going to come over and you're going to be doing a goblet squat. So I have a big weight hit, bringing it up. And then what you're going to be doing is a nice goblet squat. Like so, shooting back up. 15 reps of both, equating to 30 reps total. Only two sets of those. 60 reps is a lot of reps. So that's only why we're doing two sets. After that, we have one more exercise, which is going to completely finish your legs and then you're done. you're doing so you can do two last exercises or just this one we're going to do some abductions now if you have an abductor mach machine do that but I'm just going to use the cables wrap a ankle band whatever they're called hook on there and then you're going to abduct out hold and then come back down abduct out hold and then come back down so I want to work those abductors because it's super super important we're doing 15 reps on each leg three sets and then if you want to do an additional exercise, what I strongly recommend doing is just grab a dumb dumbbell and do some frog pumps for me. Now you're laying flat on the floor, bringing your feet together, pumping those frog pumps out, about 30 reps, two sets, and you're going to be completely finished. But to be honest with you, number one, I think I'm due on my period and I am so tired right now. Those compound moves just killed, killed me off. And number two, I need food. All I'm thinking about is food right now. I just need to eat. You know, a girl's got to eat out here. Got to, got to get those gains. Right, so let's just do this and then we're done. So there you have it, a complete leg workout brought to you by your trainer, Chrissy Chella, and I hope you enjoyed it. I just hope you learned something new. That's literally all I want. I want you to come onto this channel, onto my videos, and just learn something new. Sometimes a little bit, you know, a little bit personal. Sometimes, you know, we get a bit chatty. But overall, when it comes to workouts, I just want you to find something that reassures you, gives you that confidence, but also you find a new tip that you maybe have never come across. So if that's been the case, 
I'm just thankful and just let me know in the comments below if you found this video useful and let me know if you want a back workout, shoulder workout, whatever workouts you want and I can provide you some more useful information. If you've enjoyed this style workout then the gym program on the Tonoscope app is going to be perfect for you. Download it, the link is in the bio for your 14 day free trial and just give it a go. You never know, you might actually fall in love with something. So that's it from me. I love you always and forever and I'll see you next time for another video.